right, well, good morning, everybody. I would like to remind everyone to please make sure that all cell phones are turned to the off or vibrate position. Also, please be advised, our city council meetings are broadcast on Comcast Channel 99, AT&T UVerse, and the City of Gadsden YouTube channel. This meeting of the Gadsden City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Latham. Present. Councilman Smith. Here. Councilman Avery. Here. Councilman Back. Here. Councilman Wilson. Here. Councilwoman Minatra. Here. And Councilman Robinson. Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Councilwoman Latham to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you today first saying thank you. We thank you that you have given us another opportunity of life, health, and strength. We ask for your guidance as we do the things that you have assigned to our hands to do. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your provision. And we thank you for wisdom and knowledge. We thank you for what you've done in our city, for what you're doing and the things that you're going to do. We ask your continued blessings upon our mayor, our city council, and all who make up our city. We thank you for your faith to call those things that be not as though they were. We pray this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and council meetings held on July 9th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to approve minutes. Item six, the chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of accounts for the week of July 5th through the 11th. So Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Agenda item seven is reserved for proclamations and commendations. We have a real special group here with us this morning and uh, Mayor Ford's gonna lead that. I just wanna uh, introduce the uh, Gadsden Waterworks and Sewer Board uh, General Manager Chad Harris with us today along with numerous uh, Gadsden Waterworks and Sewer Board employees. I think everybody's well aware of the water main break that occurred a week or so ago. Uh, to say it was a catastrophic break that could have had catastrophic consequences is an understatement. But due to the leadership of this team that's here today and the hard work and dedication and coming together and working as a unit, as a family, like they always do, uh, they literally saved the day. And so without further ado, there'll be more information coming on that, but I want uh, Mayor Ford has something to say, and then we're gonna invite you guys to come up one by one and, and receive something from the so city. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm gonna turn to the water board, uh, but I just, I wanna tell y'all how much I appreciate y'all. And uh, it happened about 4 a.m. in the morning. I'm sure y'all were out before that, but uh, I got up and I did what I do at 4 a.m. and I flushed the toilet and nothing was coming. And, uh, and then I, all of a sudden, 10 minutes later, I get a call that we have no water. And I said, well, that makes sense. And uh, so then all of a sudden the calls start ringing in and Chad, I talked to Chad Hare and basically y'all are already hitting the ground at ground zero. And I just wanna say how much I appreciate y'all. You don't realize how important water is until you don't have water. And the, the, that day, I think, I'm not sure what day that was, is a Monday, I think, Chad, was it? So uh, we wanted to make sure we activated down in Collie Homes and handed out water. And uh, we were able to get in the community in, uh, in District uh, 3 and make sure they knew that we were there and present. And, uh, and y'all were already down there working on the other side of the hill. And when I went over there, I wanted to act like I wanted to get in there and help until I started sweating. And, uh, and y'all were down there about to die, and I saw Gatorade and coat, water flying everywhere. I thought, I think I'm in the way. So, but, uh, but I just wanted to tell y'all seriously how much we appreciate you. Uh, and then the next day, I hope the lunch was good. I'm sorry I couldn't eat with you. But the, the main thing is, is that you are appreciated. And, and it didn't go unnoticed. And it, it's not for us, but it's for all those people. 
And the funny thing is, is when Chad was telling me, he said, you know, this affects Horton B and this affects other areas that buy our water. And so for y'all to do what you did, I don't think you, I don't know if you really realize what a big deal it, it was. Uh, it was, it was a big deal. Uh, the big deal was for the medical, the hospitals, uh, the fire department went over there and took pumper trucks and had to rotate uh, water from Tillerson Bend, Glencoe, Ball Play, to be able to so the people in the that were staying in the hospital could have uh, air conditioner. Uh, Tony Catanzaro, an eye surgeon, called me. He said, Craig, we can't do eye surgery on these cataracts. We don't have any water at the surgery center. Uh, I mean, you know, you don't, you don't think about stuff like that. And then 30 minutes later, he said, hey, we got enough water to perform our surgeries. Uh, so I don't know what in the world y'all did. I just know you worked your butts off. And I want to tell you how much we appreciate it. And you don't go unnoticed. And we just want to uh, call you up here one at a time. So, Chad and uh, Mr. President, if you want to come down here and help us. All right. <clears throat> so, if you know I'm in the military. Now, if you ever heard, I, I, have a, I got made fun of growing up. I, I can't say my R's, but I call it a challenge corn. They always say, are you eating corn? Uh, but I'm in the military, and I believe in these challenge corns, and you only get one if you do an exceptional job. And, uh, and that's what we have from the city of Gaz and in our office and the president and Chad. You want to say anything, Chad? Sure. Yeah. First off, thank you to the mayor and, and to the council for the invitation. And just every bit of the support that you gave us. Um, I don't know in my time as the general manager or maybe as the city engineer that I've felt as much support as we had um, those two days last week. Um, challenging to say the least um, but I, I let me run over this just real quick just give you a little bit of brief history about a little bit about what happened um, around 2 30 in the morning we can tell from our SCADA system from the water plant is when what what I would call we experienced a catastrophic main failure what we found to be a 20 inch uh, ca cast iron main that directly feeds um, a tank a 5 million gallon ground storage tank off of Nakalula Road that is the primary pressure source uh, for the city of Gadsden and it also supplies the vast majority of our other water tanks in the system. Um, it took under an hour, just as a, uh, to give you an idea, it took under an hour, about 3.25 in the morning, according to the computer, uh, that the, the main break drained our North Gadsden tank, which is about a million gallon um, ground storage tank. By 5.40, in the morning and this is before the guys had a chance to even come on site that five million gallon tank was empty um, that left a three million gallon tank if you're traveling up the mountain that you can see from the road that left it there basically to control what we had left in the system mr. Joel Smith um, affectionately known as Pee Wee, um, has been retired with the board for six years um, he was the first call that Billy uh, Roberts made and absolutely answered the phone got up and started helping immediately just to kind of give you a just a, a real brief story about the family that we have at Gadsden Water and I know at the city of Gadsden um, but Billy and uh, Joel found the um, leak probably between 6 and 7 a.m. as the sun was coming up and can see a little bit more about what was going on and that's when these guys in the back that I, I get the honor to work with every day um, they know this I've called them my heroes before but these are heroes of the community and a personal heroes of mine that's when they stepped in and they they showed out um, so they came in um, in efforts immediately to isolate the valve I mean isolate the leak and so it just takes uh, for lack of a better way of saying it just a, a couple of valves on each side of the leak and we try to get as close to the leak as we can to valve that off so that it keeps pressure in the rest of the system and that's why we started to see an impact pretty much immediately to where we stopped. I say immediately. We started uh, maintaining the leak to where we were able to get some pressure back into the system. But it took until about 1 o'clock in the afternoon before that leak was completely isolated. And, guys, when I say that we were close, I mean, it was a bad situation. And, I, I, listen, I, I apologize um to the to the customers that we have and and you know i'd love to say something like that's never going to happen again but when i say that we were close to it being a catastrophic event it, we were probably about 45 minutes away from that three million gallon tank emptying 
And so it took these guys stepping up and, uh, and getting on it. And so after the, the leak was isolated, we made the decision after the system started to stabilize that we sent these guys home for the evening because they, they were going to have another big day the next day and they were in some brutal heat um, and brutal conditions. Um, so they, they went home for the evening and we started gathering up the materials that were needed. I'd like to thank Athens Utilities for kind of giving us some backup materials. Uh, those were just, you know, those just in case type of things in case something else went wrong. And, um, and also Anniston Water Works and Sewer Board that provided a, an inline valve that is just good to have. Um, wouldn't require, but it was good to have, and they had one in stock. Um, so those, those repairs the next day, bottom line, our guys did an exceptional job. Um, we were backfilling the trench. They got there about 6 o'clock in the morning, and we were backfilling the trench by about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, the parts that I'm leaving out can probably only be told by pictures. Uh, we had about a 45-minute presentation last night at the board. I will not go into a 45-minute for the sake of time. But, um, but just know that, that these guys, you know, not being hyperbolic, are true heroes to the, to the community. And I, I get the honor to recognize them. So, Mayor, you yeah. want me to go ahead and so start? Councilman Robinson, you're on the water board. You can come down here and put your place. And also, Mr. Gil Isbell, if you, as a board member, if you, if you don't mind coming forward. What in the world did Gil do? <laughs> I was there on top of it. <laughs> So, gentlemen, if you don't mind just coming through here as I call out your name. Billy Roberts. Joel Smith. Marcus Baker. Brandon Booker. David Bowen. Ben Brown. Jeffrey Corbin. Dwayne Fox. Tommy Goggins, Brett Jackson, Jeff Colley, Matt Ledbetter, Jason McKiven. Donnie Minton. Y'all can go up here and jump up on this back row, too. Y'all can fill in back behind there. Logan Saylor. David Watson. Jared Wofford. Brady Williams. These are the guys that were in the trench. These are the guys that were out in the field, but we got so many more to thank at back at the office. Don't, don't have enough room, I think, in the building to do that, but it, just believe me when I say it was a total team effort. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank well, you all for the time.
again, Mr. President, while they're leaving uh, the council chambers, sincerely, we want to thank you. City of Gadsden and all its customers uh, want to thank you for all the work you did. Uh, I mean that from the bottom of our heart. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Ford. Thank you guys for showing up. Thank you, Chad. Thank you for being here. Give them time to go back to work and all right. What a what a big moment. Thank you, Mayor Ford. We'll move to uh, along in our agenda. Next on our agenda is Section 8. Uh, it's unfinished business. 8A is a resolution appointing members to the Turrentine Avenue Architectural Review Board. This resolution was tabled until today's meeting on July the 9th. It appoints Tracy Miller and Kelly Carr for terms expiring on May 20th, 2027. What is the pleasure of the council? Um, move to adopt and, and well, I'll wait till comments. Second. All right. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. President. I just want to clarify for my, my neighbors there. Um, so we are adding Ms. Miller and Ms. Carr to replace Judge Sledge and Adam Sully. And then we also have an ordinance that will be coming up to expand that board by two additional seats. And that will be followed by a resolution adding Judge Sledge back to that board. Um, Adam Solly has said that he would be fine um, with allowing his term to expire, but that'll leave us one open seat once we add Judge Sledge back. But that's that's the procedure here. All right. Thank any you, other President. any other comments? All right, Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. All right, item nine under unfinished business is a resolution authorizing community development block grant program housing rehabilitation services agreement with Habitat for Humanity. This is to complete substantial housing rehabilitation services according to HUD program guidelines. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. All right, further under uh, item eight and unfinished business, on June 25th, there was a public hearing conducted, <coughs> excuse me, there was a public hearing conducted and a resolution was tabled indefinitely. Um, the resolution was uh, Southern Fair Ventures LLC doing business as Picnic has applied for a restaurant retail liquor license at One River Road, Gadsden, Alabama, and has met all requirements of the Code of Ordinances for the issuance of such license. So after further review, the uh, legal department, building department, and revenue department have said they have met those obligations and requirements. And so at this point, I would like to make a motion to lift that uh, resolution off the table uh, and I'll, it, it requires a second and then a vote. Second. All right. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to remove the resolution from the table, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Abstain. Abstain. We have two abstentions. Motion carries to remove the item from the table. All right. And I'd like to make a motion to adopt the resolution. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Those abstaining? Abstain. Okay, we have two abstentions. Motion carries to adopt. All right, item 10 comes under the first reading. This is an ordinance amending city code section 58-8, subsection B, subsection one. This is to change the number of members composing the Turntine Avenue Architectural Review Board from five to seven. This ordinance has been presented today for the first reading and the council will vote on it next week. Item 11 is new business. I think we have a couple today. Uh, yes, Mr. President. Uh, first one comes from the legal department for on behalf of the EMA. Um, this is a resolution authorizing an agreement with uh, Perimeter Inc. to provide a mapping service um, for the city of Gadsden um, 
including first responders. It'll notify residents of road closures and reroutings due to emergencies, um, also due to local events or public events such as concerts or track and field events or um, marathons, half marathons, 5Ks, all that good stuff. So anyway, um, this is uh, $22,750. This is a budgeted item. Um, we did receive an $11,375 grant to offset the cost of this uh, software service. So with that in mind, I'd like to ask that we suspend the rules today and consider this under new business. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today as an item of new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. I move to adopt. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Um, the next one I have, Mr. President, is a um, uh, request that comes from the engineering department for, this would just would be a resolution authorizing the approval of the permit application for the placement of herbicides on state right away um, apparently we have an agreement in place but you have to get uh, prior approval from the Department of Transportation um, before making the actual application so in order not to disrupt the, the flow of work here in the community, I would ask that we suspend the rules and consider this resolution under new business today, please. Second. All right. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today under new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Move to adopt. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. All right, that's all for new business. We have in uh, item 12 is department reports, committees, and boards. I know we have one coming from the Public Affairs <coughs> Department, Michael Rogers. Had to make sure to turn my microphone on since I remind <laughs> y'all about that all the time. Um, I'm Michael Rogers with the Public Affairs Department, and several weeks ago, uh, y'all approved uh, a contract with Rept, which is uh, the video answer platform, that, and that is going to be launching today. Uh, it should have gone live earlier today. We're going to be uh, sending out a press release this afternoon, hitting social media later. And uh, just to remind y'all of what that is, that's a way for citizens to uh, submit a question to the city, kind of uh, something that they've been wondering about, whether it's an update about a project or something like that. And it allows us to uh, provide them with a short answer. One or two minutes is kind of the goal. Uh, the mayor has already recorded at least one for us, but we can have him answer, we can have department heads answer. Uh, and the way people will get to this, uh, we're, we're, since we're rolling it out, we got a couple of different places. On our website, there's a section uh, across the top header that says, how do I? And the very first uh, option there is ask a question. We also have the news flash section, which is pretty prominent in the middle. We'll be taking the press release and putting the link there for people to find it. And then down at the very bottom of the page, uh, there's a link of all of our social media. And we've got a link to what we're calling it Ask Gadsden down there. So three places on the home page, we'll be sharing the link on um, social media in various places. And so uh, like Mayor, for example, Mayor Ford's question was, you know, what's the update on the uh, West Megan sports complex? If you watch council meetings, you kind of have an idea. But if you don't, it, then he, he gave a, a rundown of where that stands with the architect and stuff like that. Uh, for people to submit it, you know, once you go to the website, you just ask your question and you'll submit your email. Uh, once we approve the question and get an answer, then that'll be published. And you can see the other questions that other people have asked. So kind of like uh, a frequently asked question section in FAQ, if, if you have a question about something, then you can log in and well, you don't even have to log in. You can just go to that site and see if that question has been asked before 
because maybe you don't have to go through the trouble of asking it yourself. So this is a three-month trial that we're trying out. Uh, so we're you know making a push to get folks involved with it to see see how it works. We are. I, I know in pre-council Derek was talking about the map making part being one of the first cities in Alabama to to do this. We are launching alongside Leeds. Leeds is also doing this, but we are the first city in Alabama along with them to use this platform. So we're kind of giving it a test run, seeing how it goes. So. That's great. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? So, Mr. President, Please. I want to thank Michael and Brett. Uh, Brett found this at somewhere he attended, and they're from California, Brett. And they're just now, it's, it's pretty prevalent out on the West Coast, but Alabama's getting on the League of Municipalities. They're presenting at the next meeting, and also uh, we're one of the first cities in the state other than Leeds to do this. So. I think it's just transparency and I think it's good to be able to inform and, and it remember if you're called upon to answer a question I had a hard time with this you have to be quick <laughs> it's only like a 30 or 60 second answer it's in like a meeting or something so I had to redo my answer a couple of times <laughs> they said I was filibustering so but but it but it works and the people love it so it's a good thing thank you thank you I think that's exciting. I, I like the transparency uh, angle from it. And uh, then I think it's just important to let people know what we're doing as opposed to have them guess what we're doing. So I think we're being proactive uh, as, a, as a government. And hopefully people will opt in on the text.gov and the Hey Gadsden app and now the Rept app. So there's just all kind of ways to communicate with City Hall and the administration to, uh, to find out what is going on in, in your city. So hopefully people will do that. Look forward to seeing how it works. Yep. So we're going to be talking about it a lot here soon, so just keep your eyes out. Is there something we can share, like on social media in our neighborhood area? You know, how we'll we're... have a post going out tonight okay. um, I'll I'll be looking about for that. it yeah. specifically. Because um, part, part of what we're doing today is, you know, like I said, we had the, the final meeting yesterday with, with the company just yeah. to hit the final bullet points. Um, I've got a couple of answers that folks have have answered that you know I need to finish uploading. Uh, we do have some that are already live on the site right now, uh, but that that went live. I think it was at 9:30 or 10 this morning, so it's 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 fresh. But yeah, we, yeah. we'll be we'll have things on social media that you can share in neighborhood watch groups, mention at community meetings or or at church on Sunday or wherever you want yeah. to. Well, that's great. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And I've also got. Um, someone else that's coming up to speak about another another event this is okay uh, jesse so i'll let her introduce herself okay thank you michael hey guys i'm jesse Lindsay. i am also with the public affairs department and i'm here to talk to you this evening or this morning rather about community safety night which is an event that's going to be put on by the city and kind of co-hosted with the Gaston Police Department, the Gaston Fire Department, and so forth, EMA, uh, on August 6th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the venue. Um, so as it is a community safety event, we have already spoken with uh, Councilman Wilson and gotten the blessing from the Public Safety Committee to host it. Um, there will be dunking booths. We'll do the kid passports. It's really looking forward, to, you know, to making connections with the community for, you know, the police department, the fire department, EMA, all of those involved. Um, Etowah County Sheriff's Office and the Alabama National Guard will also be present. Um, it is important to note that transportation will be provided from the housing developments, and we are working to establish a route for that currently. Um, as it is a free event, donations are always welcome. Very welcome. Uh, and so what I'd ask for you guys today is just to help us get the word out. We'll be creating an event to share on Facebook and such, but if you guys could help us shed the word, share the word in your districts, that would be so great moving forward. Um, does anybody have any questions for me thus far? Will Councilman Wilson be on the Duncan booth? That'll, yeah. that'll pretty much get the, the traffic area out there big time. If he does, will you, sir? Uh, no, no, I don't like. Well, I'm not. No. What was the day I can think of a couple of people in uh, in short distance for me that I'd like to put in a Duncan booth right now. But, um, well, I would challenge you to do that, sir. That would be that would be yeah. top notch. Um, one th one suggestion, no kidding, that I do have that kind of piggybacks on Michael's previous presentation. I watched a really great interview with a panel um, about 
how effect how to effectively communicate with your citizens and how to go meet them where they are you know and specifically they talk about programs like C click fix and and things like that and I again want to commend Brett and the mayor's staff on all the efforts you guys are taking to be really creative with going and meeting our citizens where they are um, one great recommendation that came out of this video that I watched um, that I think we could all learn from is making sure that we have interpreters at these events these community outreach events um, because again as has been mentioned here before we have a not insignificant population of English as a second language citizens so um, no knowing the minorities that are represented in your community and having some sort of translator available at some of these community outreach events can be really effective so thank you though for what y'all are doing thank you, thank you Council and tell us the date again August 6th that is August 6th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the venue all right. You got anybody else? So, Mr. President, this yes. has been a huge recruiting tool. The police officers have embraced this, and Jesse and Michael and Tina have just taken it and ran with it. And it, we thought it was going to be small, and it's turned into be something really big. Uh, so, just to give the council an update, we have three hopefully graduating the academy in August police officers, and we have hopefully ten, based on these recruiting efforts, going to the academy. And when will that start, September? August 26th. And uh, is that right, Chief Jaggers, 10? Nine. Nine. One's already certified. One's already certified. So the, this has been a big deal. And it's really, it hadn't come from me or Chief Jaggers. It's come from the rank and file on down. And they've just embraced it. And uh, so, I mean, we're, we're excited about it. So our numbers are getting there. You know, fire department, I think we're, I think we're one away from capping out, and I think we're almost. I think we've hired two, so I told them to go one over. So, yeah, so we're gonna have a waiting list in fire department. Oh, outstanding! So we're gonna get the there in the police department too. Yeah, we well, appreciate the efforts. I think that's what it takes is to do what y'all are doing. And uh, Councilman Wilson's comments were right on target of meeting people where they are. Yes, sir. I think that's that's crucial, and y'all are doing that. So thank you. Yeah. Appreciate the leadership. Thank you. Looking forward to it. All right. Any other departments or reports? If not, we will move into uh, agenda item 13, which is citizen request to speak. Uh, Robert Washington is here today uh, in recognition of Courtney Washington, who will represent the United States at the Obstacle Course Racing World Championship. Mr. Washington here. Well, darn. Mr. President, can I say something about sure. her? Please so do. Courtney won the uh, Barbarian tra Challenge, and she is from Southside, I believe, right, Chris? Okay. And uh, wonderful girl. Uh, we work out in the afternoon. I don't work out with her, obviously. <laughs> She's on a whole other level. Uh, <laughs> but she is a sweet young lady, and I think we all know her family. And she is looking for donations. She's going to Costa Rica to represent us in the national competition so I personally donated uh, and she I mean anything helps her you know $25 $50 whatever but uh, we she's been borrowing our barbarian uh, workout stuff up at the Falls Christina let her borrow it her uh, trainer is Condi who's the assistant police chief from the city of Itala so there's a lot of people involved in this supporting her and she's a, just a she's a joy to be around so just well, that's to wonderful. That. we'll uh I guess we can contact Mr. Washington and see if he wants to come back next week or whatever. We, he has an open invitation. We'd love to hear about uh, his daughter, about Courtney, and, uh, and she's welcome to come as well when you see her, Mayor Ford. Yeah, thank you. Tell her, uh, well, that's good to know that she's representing our country and, and from right here in Gadsden. So yeah. that's great. All right. Uh, there's no other requests there, so we'll move to Section 14, Remarks by the Mayor and Council. Mayor Ford, do you want to start us sure. off? Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'm, I'm not going to say, I know there's back in times coming up when, Michael? Oh, a long ways away. I thought it was August, so that's why I wanted oh. to bring it up. But it's yeah. October. We'll just go ahead and talk. Not back in time, walk through time. Yeah, same thing. Back to the future. Uh, <laughs> it could be back in time. It's in the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll announce that in September. Sorry about that, Michael. Uh, but I want to explain what we're going through right now. Uh, we are uh, we are going through today is day one uh, that we've been meeting with department heads about the budget process. 
uh, I want to I want to go through some things. There was an email chain going around, and I want to explain the reasons uh, why we can't attend a meeting after hours and off campus. I would say. Uh, we're having our first internal budget meetings with department heads. Uh, there's more than 25 departments within the city. It takes about an hour and a half per department. Uh, I'm not sure if the previous mayors have ever been in on the budget meetings, but I am. I'm on every one of them. Uh, Brandon's doing a wonderful job along with Gina and uh, Brittany's assisting us and uh, we're meeting every day. This will take approximately three to four weeks for us to meet with all 25 departments and then we'll have a budget that we present to the council. Uh, the mayor's responsibility is to draft a budget proposal. It's up to the council to vote yes or no. Uh, what we're doing is trying to put together a budget based on the numbers that we have forecasted it's very tedious what Brandon has to do. Not only does he just take the previous year's budget, but he also has to take revenue projections. That's, of course, the mayor wants him to jack up the revenue projections, so he wants to jack them down mm -hmm. to be conservative. So we have to get with Laura in revenue, and she has to tell us of all the five, six restaurants we got opening up in the next fiscal year, uh, what the projections may be will increase that. We also look at the increase in the revenue of the growth that y'all have all voted on, and we've all helped gassed and grow again, so what we're looking at in the revenue projections. And that goes into the budget then, of what we can budget for each department, and then if pay raises are available, what we do there. There's also something with new overtime rules. That's why we I'm not going to authorize employees or staff to be able to come to meetings after hours unless I deem it necessary. Uh, overtime is time and a half, and it costs the city a lot of money. Right now, we are budgeting in a good manner. We're within our means, and we're about 4 or 5% below where we should be on payroll. Uh, so I'm proud to say that. We've, we've tightened our belt and made sure uh, we're where we need to be for the next fiscal year. Uh, I just feel it's a waste of taxpaying dollars to have to meet after hours when we don't even have the necessary information. I want to talk about the subcommittees. Uh, your subcommittees on the council are very important to the mayor's office. I want you to know that. However, the attorney general has ruled that committees are advisory only. They have no, it's not an administrative body. Neither nor the chairman of the committee have any administrative or executive authority. That's coming straight from the attorney general's opinion. So let me give you a good example. Uh, Councilwoman Minotra, Public Works. We have leaned on her quite heavily in Public Works when we needed an additional equipment. Saved me a lot of time of meeting with them, with Ty. You just don't meet with Public Works in 30 minutes. It probably takes two to three hours. And for her to come back and tell me, hey, it's up to you, but you got to find the money, but we need five loader trucks, four trash trucks. Basically, you need to find $6 million if you want to do what you want to do. So then I go back and I try to find what we can find that we present to the council that's fiscally responsible. And then that's what we do. Uh, I, I, I don't want to be personal uh, because I, a lot of things going on in this country, uh, but the people voted for change two years ago. And we're not going to do things the way they used to be done. Uh, there's certain uh, people in the city of Gadsden, and I'm going to say this kindly, in certain areas, that still think they ought to conduct business the way they've been conducting business for the last 40 years. I'm not going to do that. Uh, we, if, if I disagree with you, I'm going to tell you I disagree with you. You tell me you disagree with me, and then we're going to go about our way, and we're going to be cordial. But if you don't, if you don't play ball with me, I'm not going to play ball with you, just to be honest with you. I'm trying to run a business. This total budget of this city is $100 million. I take it very serious. Uh, when I ran for this position, I was on budget committee in Montgomery. It had a $9 billion budget. And we put a lot of time into that budget for education, uh, workforce development, four-year schools, two-year schools, and et cetera. And I'm doing the same with this budget. So I'm not going to go to a dog and pony show just to satisfy certain people when I know we don't have our information ready and I want to present to the whole council as a whole and make sure I have my facts and figures straight. So I just want to say that very kindly, Mr. President, and, uh, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Mayor Ford. Councilwoman Latham. I don't have any remarks, but the mayor said he would be happy to take a question. I do have to, I do want to yes, ask a question. Sure. 
with respect to as it relates to our district meetings. So how will we handle that uh, where that's probably the most appropriate place for department heads to address some issues? Is, is that something that... Absolutely. So if you have a district meeting quarterly or something, yes, we could. So President Biden passed an administrative action that's getting upheld in the Texas Supreme Court. Uh, but as far as in Alabama, we've had to we've had to abide by this executive amendment. If anybody makes below twenty five dollars and what is it six cents an hour, then you have to pay time and a half uh, whether they show up or not, whether they're management or not. So previously, if you were a manager and you had four people in the handbook, this is why we need to revise our handbook four people under your direction as, an, uh, as a supervisor, you didn't get overtime. So now, if you make $25 an hour, which is uh, unfortunately a lot, 80% of probably the employees in the city of Gaston, when they show up after hours, we have to pay time and a half. So we've had to, we, we're kind of in a limbo here waiting on, on what's happening. Lee's been advising us. And I think in October, Lee, it goes up to $28. So we're just like bum fuzzled. Uh, so we think possibly the Supreme Court may throw that out, but we got to live by the law that the President of the United States signs in, especially executive amendments. So uh, if you have a quarterly meeting, sure. If you have a bi weekly meeting, no. <laughs> you know, we just can't do it. Uh, but if you'll tell me and get with our office and say, hey, we have quarterly meetings and we're about to do our meetings also after this next budget in conjunction with the council members, uh, because we can't do anything without y'all, and, and I hope y'all feel the same about us, and we're all working together. So, yes, ma'am, we will. Thank you. All right. That off? That's Councilwoman. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councilman Smith. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just want to give another shout out to the water department for the great job of handling what actually was a crisis and the city and the water department working together. It's good to see all of them come here today and be recognized. So we just appreciate um, the quick response to what was going on a few days ago. Also just want to recognize the blueprint for being here. Um, they are Sandra's member of our church, of course, and um, they're located across from the fire department downtown and you get used to hearing that name they're doing great things here in the city of Gaston so glad to have representatives from the blueprint here today we know that good news travels slow bad news travel fast so all those constituents in district 2 that camper is finally moved I don't know what UFO dropped it off and who picked it up but I'm so glad to see it no longer in North Gaston there along highway Highway 411. So just want to thank everybody, every department head for all that you do. Mayor Ford, the council, we just appreciate all that's going on in the city of Gaston. Let's keep moving forward. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Avery. Thank you, Mr. President. So I want to, um, I want to uh, address some things here. Uh, over the, I think, past two weekends, there have been some vehicles towed, um, calls have been made, and so to the, to the council persons, um, um, and listen, if you get a letter in the mail uh, stating the concern, a concern about your property, you don't have to wait to the date to come to council meeting to address that. There's a number that is on there to the building department, if I'm not mistaken, with the person name on it who you address that problem with. Please call the building department. Um, as the city council, I am not uh, aware of the full details of what they are addressing your property about. But I'm sure if you call that number on there, they will be more than happy to assist and help you, okay? Calling us, it's, it's kind of, we then have to go do the homework that probably is addressed on that letter to you or that you can call the building department and get direct attention uh, for. So I know that there had been a big spill on Facebook and some addressing here at, Count, I mean at, at City Hall about some things. Um, and, and, and listen, some mistakes can be made and, and probably have been made. No one here uh, and outside of this facility is perfect, okay? So at least 
uh, work with the, the the building department. They do a great job. Thank all of those uh, uh, that are doing uh, such a great job there in the in the building department. Their transparency and their willingness to work with people. Okay. <clears throat> I want to ditto the, uh, uh, again, the water department, um, each member uh, that's out on in, in the community, those that are in an office for all their hard work and efforts that they do. Uh, thank uh, Chad, uh, Mr. Harris, sorry for uh, coming and uh, being a part of this, um, this uh, day of appreciation. Um, so I do also want to address uh, 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 some comments here as it relates to transparency. There, there's been a lot of uh, things I've, I've been hearing at this council meeting that <clears throat> is is very good. And and but when things are being said, I think there's also that actions come behind those words. Uh, transparency. There's been emails sent out as it relates to today. There's a finance committee meeting downtown Civic Center at 5:30. I am unaware or were unaware. Of of the overtime rule and uh, the uh, uh, the addressing of an e of those emails that I've sent as it relates to those to come to the meeting um, from the uh, from the city employment side, meaning director of finance and revenue, people of that uh, CDBG and HUD uh, administrator. Uh, I I do agree with the overtime rule. I do agree with managing and budgeting our money at the statements that the mayor has made. Um, but again, transparency is key. Um, uh, and so if I knew that, I would have been more than happy to change the meeting time and location to do so. And I only speak of this here because, again, transparency is, is, is key and it, it has been addressed. Um, and, and, and I just want to be full, fully transparent. Um, subcommittees, as it relates to the statement, is I am very... Uh, in agreement with subcommittees and things of that nature, uh, and and I am so in agreement with the people uh, voted for change, and that there are uh, members of our community that wants to see things done in a certain way, a way that they have been done for years, and that works on both sides. Uh, I think that uh, that is the case, um, and I think we sometimes still see business up, uh, uh, done as usual um, in certain areas and for, in certain ways. Um, but to disagree and, and find a way of dis, uh, uh, agreeing, to be able to work together is very important. Uh, and I try to do my best to take uh, advice from those that, that sit here on this DS with me, uh, but you got to be able to talk. You got to also be able to have those uh, conversations, those heated conversations. No matter how big someone won or how small someone won, we won. We won the, the, the respect and the vote of our people to be trusted to do our job. And, 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 and no matter how much I agree with any one of these ladies and gentlemen up here, I will still do whatever I can to work with each and every single last one of them, no matter how we agree or how we don't agree. Uh, 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 agree. And so I just wanted to make that statement known. Hopefully that won't go on deaf ears and that we will continue to move forward um, and, and some things be addressed uh, that is necessary. Um, we will conduct our finance committee meeting uh, today uh, with taking those statements in, in, in um, consideration as it relates to overtime and, 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 and what's going on, the nature of what's going on in our uh, United States to, uh, of America. I want to, to that, I want to close by saying this. I think we need a moment of reflection um, of the tone and tenor of our politics. Uh, it is our right to uh, criticize policies and even our character, uh, uh, even the character of policy effectiveness. Uh, we, we, we live in an era where um, exclatory um, rhetoric says the most damning and insightful things and that uh, are oftentimes are what's rewarded. Those are oftentimes what's rewarded. I think we need to calm down and 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 check ourselves and just check again the tone the tone and tenor uh, of what's going on as we all know that uh, a former president was sh shot at uh and 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 when when one disagree and and does not agree 
with those uh, things that are said and done, that does not give anyone the, the, the space and, and, and the opportunity to do what was attempted to do. And even in our local politics, no matter how, again, uh, frivolous we become with each other, that we just stay focused on the common goal. And today, I want to make it publicly known that I am in tune and I am on board with the common goal. And that's the, that's the better good of all of Gaston. However, I am elected in District 3. And so I do have a deeply connection and rooted connection in D District 3. And so therefore, I seek those needs in District 3 while also being respectful for each and every one of my colleagues' districts up here as a whole. And so again, I hope that again this falls on, on uh, do not fall on deaf ears, and that it's, it's taken hold hardly from a genuine space. At this time, Mr. President, I yield my comments. Mr. President. Thank Could you, I just? I want to. I appreciate his comments, and I I take full responsibility. I just assume since you were finance chairman, uh, counselor, you knew of the new rules, so we'll make sure we abreast you of all changes and rules and regulations that come down the pipe. I just I shouldn't assume that. All right. Thank you very much for that, Mayor Ford. Thank you, Councilman Avery. Councilman Wilson. Uh, I don't have any comments, Mr. President. Thank you. All right, you. Councilwoman Minotra. Um, I just wanted to continue to sing the praises of the Senior Wellness Center that opened um, over a month ago at 2829 West Megan Boulevard. Um, I spoke to the director, Malia West, uh, just last week, and um, she's very proud of the fact that well over 700 people walked through that building um, in the month of June. So we're thrilled at the response that we've gotten from the community and it continues to grow. And as I mentioned, a membership is now over 200 people. So thank you. Wonderful. Councilman Robinson. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I just want to reiterate the, uh, the guys in uh, the water board uh, and what they did last Monday. And, and me and you have the, uh, we're, we're on that, that board and we get to, we got to sit through that hour and 45 minute meeting yesterday afternoon. And, and it's, and I'm not saying that I enjoyed every bit of it because I learned so much. And Chad uh, Hare made the, made the point that, so, you know, I'm not going to put you all through that 45 minute picture display, but really you, if you have time or if, if mayor, if you can check that out, it's really amazing what they did and how they, how they came about finding that, that leak and then what they had to do to get it fixed. And in, in the timely manner, they did get it fixed. So just uh, thank them again for that. Uh, we, uh, had something come up on social media. I'm not a big social media person. I'll, I'll go check some things. If I'm tagged in something, I can see it uh, on one of the neighborhood watch pages there in District 7 uh, about a park, a Dwight Park over there off Cabot Avenue. Uh, I think uh, me and uh, Councilwoman Minatra and Mr. Ford were, were, were tagged in it. We are, we have looked at that and I think everything's gonna get cleared up. I, I do agree, grass should not get that high, but it's not as high as, as where we would go out and charge somebody to cut your grass. I mean, I think you have to get 13 inches for that to happen. But just, you know, we, I, I know I put my number out there. I know Dixie, or Councilwoman Minotra's put her number. I've, I've heard Jason do it on this right here. He'll yell it. I know the other ones. I mean, we're, we're out there. We have to know, if you'll let us know something we can get it fixed. I mean, we are we are the elected officials. You guys elected us in here. We care about the community. We care about your community. But if we don't know, I just can't stumble upon a social media post that's already got 55 comments, and then and then try to backtrack it. So just just do you know we're we're working on all these apps for you guys to inform us, and we're trying our best to communicate as well as possible with you guys. So just try to. Uh, I understand people go on social media and kind of vent, but try to come to us directly and we, we can get your problem fixed a lot faster. That'll be all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman Robinson. Yeah, along with that comment, uh, our public affairs office is doing a great job uh, in getting the word out. If you go to cityofgadston.com, uh, you can find virtually anything you need uh, for contacting any of us or any city de department and then we have the text.gov you can opt in if you're not already in uh, the hey gadsden app you have to download that and uh, then the new one is rep that's rep apostrophe d and that's going to be where you can ask a question and you'll get a video response from that department head if you want to talk about grass you'll probably have somebody from public Works. so encourage everybody to share that spread that word and and be informed uh, 
want to again jump on the water board bandwagon. What a great bunch of folks. Uh, we're, we're blessed to have them in our city. What we came away from last night, uh, former Representative Gil Isbell's here and uh, he's on that board as well, is uh, the family atmosphere at Gas and Waterworks. The gentleman, Joel Smith, who everybody affectionately calls Pee Wee, retired six years ago. So the person in charge that was responsible for that water leak at whatever time in the morning calls Pee Wee in the morning and he Pee Wee answers the phone out of dead sleep and he gets his britches on and his boots and he's there. So he and uh, Billy ride around in the dark of the night trying to find this water leak. So that's the kind of dedication, that's the kind of people that we have in our Cook community. And Mayor Ford, back when we were recruiting uh, ultra safe nuclear and you were out of town so I, I slipped into your spot there at the meeting at the community college and uh, there were three cities competing for that 250 plus million dollar company uh, or project that will be located here in, in Gadsden and it just dawned on me you know I didn't haven't really been in one of those meetings but I looked him in the eye and I said you know there's two other cities that are great cities you're going to hear the same thing from those cities that you're going to hear from our city how we're going to do whatever to uh, be a good partner with you should you choose us I said but we have something that those other two cities don't have and it's our people the people of Gadsden and Etowah County make us different than the other communities in Austin Texas and somewhere in North Carolina that we were competing against and I think that resonated in this water leak uh, situation not only the Gadsden Water Works and Sewer Board which is a separate entity they stand alone. They are not under the city of Gadsden, but the city of Gadsden was there. Mayor Ford was there. There were uh, public affairs were there, getting the word out. Brett was there. Michael was there, and others. We were we were in working in concert. Everything's working together, just like we do with Etowah County, seat of government, and the other 11 municipalities in Etowah County. That's what makes us better, y'all. That's what makes Gadsden tick and Etowah County tick. Is our people. It's you. It's those of you that show up every Tuesday and and want to know what's going on. So I'm, I'm proud of our people. I'm, I'm proud of uh, not just the people at the water board, but our people in Gadsden and Etowah County in general. That's what makes us better. So uh, on to some announcements. These are kind of public service announcements. If you go down Rainbow Drive around the skating rink, uh, Horton Bend exit, you're going to notice that the long-awaited turn lanes are, are now under construction. Big thanks to uh, County Commissioner Craig Enzer for obtaining a grant for that. Uh, but the, the traffic is, you know, the speed limit's 45. The state of Alabama is asking us to go 35. Uh, there's cones. There's all kind of signals and things flashing. There's a lot of men out there working. So be careful when you're going down Rainbow Drive, probably starting around Pruitt's. Uh, if you're going south there toward Rainbow City to past the entrance to Horton's Bend right there. So there's going to be a lot of congestion. You know, to have that kind of growth, it, it takes a while. So I don't know how long it'll take them to do this project, but it's, I think, a couple of turn lanes, one coming up Horton's Bend and one coming off of Rainbow Drive. It'll be great when it's done, so let's please pay attention to the traffic there. Uh, we've talked about flock cameras. Uh, if you weren't aware, uh, Gas and Police Department was involved in stopping a basically an international crime ring that was occurring here in gas and not just in gas and all over the country but our flock cameras that are newly installed was a was a large part of that along with our uh, police department so that was an investment this council voted for and the brought to us by the administration every city has these flock cameras there's nothing nefarious about it it's smart technology it allows uh, law enforcement to do what they need to do to solve crimes but in this case also to prevent crimes so very proud of that proud of our police department and uh, and how that worked and and how they uh, ar arrested two people i think from another country like romania or somewhere like that so uh, and there'll be more flock cameras coming they're they're in the budget forthcoming also tomorrow gadsden city high school students are volunteering to paint fire hydrants Y'all, believe it or not, we have over a thousand fire hydrants in the city of Gadsden, and a lot of them are in need of uh, repainting. So it's a public safety issue, and it's also a community pride issue. I happen to have a fire hydrant in my front side yard, so I look forward to that. It, it, it needs a coat of paint, so uh, it, I look forward to seeing what color they paint it and 
when they get to that one. Uh, they, we have a grand opening at the Gadsden Industrial Park. This is the former uh, steel mill, R Republic Steel or LTV Steel site. It's this Friday, 70 plus good manufacturing jobs and they're growing. This is, is you say it Magnico? Mag Magnico Matrail. I think they're out of Ohio. Uh, I was heard that when they first came here. They searched far and wide once again, found the steel plant site, uh, 70 good manufacturing jobs over, over there. And once again, I think it was our people. They were looking for people that could do the kind of manufacturing that they needed, and they chose Gadsden, Alabama. Um, our public works department, uh, in front, while we were over there, the, our public works uh, department uncovered uh, a sidewalk in the Oak Park community. Now, that doesn't sound like a, a, a big deal, right? But it was overgrown with grass. Uh, it's about $1 million worth of sidewalk. If you go out and do a sidewalk today, I don't know how many linear feet or whatever it is, but side, it's, it's concrete and it's labor intensive. It's very expensive. So they've kind of uh, recovered uh, about a million dollars worth of usable sidewalks, which allows people to walk on the sidewalk, not in the street. It's just a lot safer. So hats off to Public Works for, for that find. And then last but not least, we have now received our Quint 4 ladder truck. Uh, this month, this was paid for, I guess, in the last administration through the ARP money. Is that right, Mayor? Yes, sir. That's when y'all voted on it. We moved money over to get it, and it was a year behind. And right. We got it, and they got it in operation now. Man, that's great. That's uh, uh, critically important. There's going to be an unveiling this coming Monday, July 22nd at 10 a.m. at station number four in Alabama City in District 6. And I will be out of town, so if y'all could attend, it would be great. Sure, that'll be yeah. great. Well, that's, uh, you know, we, we talk about our fleets. We talk about public works fleets, our police cars. We've replaced 40-plus police vehicles this term so far, a uh, couple of fire trucks, I think. And these are critically important. Those things get, get run pretty hard, and, uh, and, and we do the best job we can maintenance-wise to get all we can get out of them. But when you got to replace one, y'all, you just got to have it. And it's a Quint 4 ladder truck. 1.2 million. Yeah, 1.2 million. And we got the bottom of the line, but we still got a nice one. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's, but, yeah. So you got to go because, you know, the, the way they initiate a truck in there, you have to push it back into the bay. That's well, right. this is a ladder truck, so they're going to need every willing body to push this <laughs> ladder truck back yeah. in the bay. <laughs> so it's just kind of. I'll be there. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you can so push it in. We're right. excited we'll just, about it. You can yeah. do it. That's well, that'll be fun. That's uh, yeah. I, we were saw that over in your district uh, at the new fire station. How I didn't know that was the thing, but now they, yeah, that's a neat story behind that. How uh, historically that's that's done. So, we all it's it's, it's been a great day at the uh, city council meeting at the city of Gaston. Again, headlined by our Gaston Waterworks and Sewer Board uh, folks that uh, literally are the unsung heroes. That uh, we were so close to not having water. And that would have been national news. That would have been probably the lead story on NBC uh, with, without water, a town our size. We also sell water to numerous other water departments. They would have been without water. So it could have been a real catastrophic event. And uh, thank God that did not happen. And thank for the uh, folks at the Gas and Waterworks and Sewer Board for their actions to prohibit that from, from happening. So without any further comments, we will adjourn this meeting. Everybody have a good week.